Welcome to our video case study where I think this is the first case study I can honestly say no diagnostic equipment was required. Um, long story short, this had an overfueling cylinder injector stuck open. Um, great opportunity though for us to try and look at a number of non-intrusive tests that might reveal a killer test that we can do to simply say yes that injector is stuck open. Um, as I go through the tests you'll see I started to focus on a particular waveform that really I'd assumed held the key to diagnosis. You know what they say about assumptions. Enjoy. So Ford Fiesta here, we're looking at um, some form of unstable idle. There's definitely a lack of power as well. Engine warning lights on, two fault codes in there, both fuel pressure related. They are P008962 and P053F21. Now, symptoms to consider before we get too deep. Um, smell of fuel about the vehicle, so not within the engine base. I'm not concerned about leaks, but certainly overfueling is what it smells like. I noticed I turned the ignition off and there's a um, petrol vapor emitted from the tailpipe, so something's going on there. And also the oil level on the dipstick, the oil level is over the maximum and you can certainly smell fuel on the dipstick. So we'll start with, um, I think, uh, ignition, certainly injection and fuel rail pressure. I'm going to switch this off in a second. Switch off, fuel pressure dropped dramatically. So the decaying fuel pressure is what I was concerned about in that previous video. So um, we've got channel B here, which is fuel pressure. I'm just changing the scaling and um, at idle we are around about 2.3 volts. Um, turn the engine off and of course we lose all this um, high frequency noise because of ignition. And then we've got this decay and that decay should not be there. We should try and maintain some pressure in the rail. Uh, so let's zoom in a little bit closer. And what I notice, um, of course, are these HT spikes. Notice how we have uh, one, two good, and then one down, two high, one down, two high, one down. That could well be because of um, peak firing voltage across a soiled plug. Um, simply cannot jump that gap, so we don't, don't generate that high energy. Um, the other intriguing thing is if I change the scaling here, um, and then I'll add some filtering. It's this sawtooth effect that we can see in the fuel pressure. So we'll add some filtering, right? And well, you see here that we've got um, these pulsations or these disturbances to fuel rail pressure. Those are most probably from induced voltage into the fuel rail pressure signal via injection events. But we seem to have an injection event, then a decay, then an increase, injection event, and then a decay. I would expect that to sort of plateau or maybe not have such a, um, a ramped effect or ramp decline. Okay, so food for thought there. Um, initial thoughts, certainly losing fuel pressure. Okay, moving on with our diagnosis, then channel A is our ignition coil event. Now I'd remove the fuse from the fuse box engine bay that protects ignition coils. And for some reason, getting this odd pattern, I was expecting a bit of a ramp up. Now, I did have a problem with the current clamp in that the battery light was flashing for low battery, so maybe there's something there. Nevertheless, we can use these as indications of ignition events. Note it's a three cylinder as well, yet I've kept four partitions for the four stroke cycle. So we do have a firing event every 240 degrees of crank rotation. So if we just pull those two time rulers there, they approximate uh, 240 degrees and then the same for the following cylinder, so on and so forth. Um, firing order also is one, two, three, which is quite unique. So one, two, three, and then back to one again. Fuel rail pressure, remember from the previous video, we've got these induced events into the fuel rail pressure sensor signal because that's for one injection event there. That's cylinder one, cylinder two, and cylinder three. If I pull up cylinder two, you'll see how that coincides there with that event we can see in the rail pressure. Uh, so analysis wise, um, we talked about this decay, of course, it's, I'm quite intrigued by the injection events themselves because we seem to have an injection event twice per 720 for four stroke cycle. So let's take injection event number one. So cylinder number one, 
injection event number one. Notice how we have an injection event just before TDC on compression. Obviously we're starting at TDC compression cylinder one, but this is the injection event before. And then roll on uh, between 360 and 540. There we've got another injection event, which will be the induction stroke for cylinder one. Okay, so this would be the power stroke, exhaust stroke, induction stroke for number one and then back onto power so it's quite cool how we seem to have um, an injection event during the induction stroke and just before tdc on compression as well only one injector remember per cylinder and direct into the cylinder as well all right coming on to analysis of current this is what bugged me and still does at the moment um, it's this hump that we see here in the current we see it on injector 2 and we see it on injector 3 yet when you compare it to injector 1 we've got this nice cut off this nice flat line for every injection event whereas every other event on cylinder 2 and cylinder 3 we've got this hump which I'm not sure what it is at this stage but we'll go through that and where does it occur well on that one that will be the um, induction event for cylinder two firing. Yeah, so we'd have cylinder two induction, compression, and then power. Yeah, that would be just before TDC on the compression stroke of cylinder two. Same again here, induction stroke for number three, and then just before we get to TDC on number three, Got this event here so it seems to be on the induction stroke for some reason again don't have an explanation but um yeah that's what's bugging me right now all right so after a few hours measuring we were focusing on fuel fuel pressure remember there was a smell of fuel certainly um loss of fuel pressure now this is a um, direct gasoline injection so you turn the ignition off should maintain fuel rail pressure and it was decaying what we've noticed in the captures is it's actually decaying between injection events as well. So an injector will activate and then it decays and then it's back again and then it decays. So it, it really is truly over fueling. Trying to prove categorically whether it's electrical or mechanical is really difficult and that's what I've tried to focus on. Um, I've seen this so many times with diesel injectors as well. So electrically, I can't really fault this, although there is something I'm concerned about in the current and that's basically where the injector switches off. It's not clean on two injectors. I've then used um, a stethoscope. So we've got like an attachment that goes into our TA143 accelerometer. Um, place that down on each injector and have a listen to them as well. There is a difference between cylinder one, which is a good one, cylinder two, which we've failed. I'll show you why, or I'll talk about why, and cylinder three. Here we have the test results from the uh, stethoscope measurement so this was using the stethoscope attachment to the um, accelerometer and in NVH in the setup we actually set it up as a uh, microphone so although we are or we have an accelerometer connected we tell the software it's a microphone and the beauty of that is we can play back the audio so I'm just going to play this and between these two markers you'll hear injector number one there we go and then followed by two taps that's me just tapping the accelerometer stethoscope attachment on the body that was injector number two which is certainly not as crisp as number one just tapping the body again and number three it's kind of in between the two really just notice this as well, this uh, unstable idle, because remember this is over fueling. We, this is our idle speed here. You'd expect that to be nice and smooth. Um, perhaps another way to view this would be if we were to highlight this area here and if we auto scale. So look at the amplitude there from injector number one. And then we move across to injector two. So there's definitely a change in amplitude there. And then injector three is somewhere in between so going on amplitude alone you would probably say injector one the more defined injector two the least and injector three are somewhere in between a tough one to call as ever 
So drilling down into these injectors a little bit deeper, I've actually got number one injector here on the left using this view and number two injector on the right. And the reason being, this is just to zoom right into them, see if we can see anything at all that separates one from the other. And even this is tough as well. So um, one thing I did notice here was this um, uh, induced voltage here when the differential changes between the yellow and the and the green. So there is actually no differential change there at all. Um, and of course, as soon as that yellow drops to zero, we're already at zero, we get this induced voltage. Where there is no differential, we get no current flow. You'll notice there that the current drops immediately. And when I compare it to cylinder two, there's this delay here. So um, both the uh, purple waveform and the, the cyan, the light blue, they are at zero there. Yet the delay, there is a slight delay there where the actually induced voltage appears. So there was that. Um, this event here as well, where momentarily there is no differential. So again, we have an induced moment here. I was looking at the current level at that point in time, and there is a slight difference. You see how that is slightly raised there, along with these, compared to these peaks here on injector two, whereas on injector one, this drop here aligns with the peaks here. So uh, not a lot in it really, but um, I've actually seen similar events on injector one, and injector one is our good one. So let's zoom out and just see if there's anything in this pintle hump. I was looking at this pintle hump here, hoping that maybe if our pintle was stuck open, that we might see something there. And let's compare that with cylinder two. You could probably, oh, I don't know, it's difficult, but it, there is a hump there. Equally, there is. It's probably more pronounced, actually, on injector two. Remember, number two is the offender. And let's just, um, I don't know, grab another one. Let's try zooming in on this one over here. Let's pull that over. Oh, there we are. We've got um, two events there. So we've only got these uh, two peaks here. So we've changed the holding duration. But notice we've got that gap there before we have the induced voltage, even though our differential between the yellow and the green is virtually zero. So that was a bit of a red herring. Um, also note, look at that as well. If I look at where that current falls during this momentary event of no differential as the current drops we get that spike because we've instantly switched off we are raised above these peaks here on injector one so what i'm getting at is there is not a lot to choose between these electrically you could not categorically say that from these waveforms this number two injector is faulty if you're comparing it against the known good one, number one. So um, a tough call again. Um, it's, it's a tough one to call. I mean, what we've basically done now is remove the spark plugs. We can see that cylinder two is soaking wet. We've had a bore scope down there. We can see that the piston crown is wet. So we know we're focusing on cylinder two. Really, I think we'll go for at least one injector, ideally all three, because I'm concerned about two. And I'll elaborate more when we actually discuss the pressure waveforms um, and the MVH captures as well. Right, so here we are. This is three injectors replaced. Now we went for the full set. Um, looking at the fact captures initially, we can definitely see there's a clean cut off in the current. And that's what concerned me before. And it looks like that is the telltale signal that we need to look out for when we get this scenario. Um, Overfueling has stopped completely. Let's just start it up so the proof is always in the pudding. Car that's running sweet. I will review the capture so we can actually see this current that I'm talking about because I'm convinced there is something there. Um, oil and filter replaced of course because of contamination and a good road test and fingers crossed we're out the, uh, we're out the woods. Time will tell, remember, because this car has been overfueling for a considerable amount of time. There could be contamination to oxygen sensor and catalyst. Uh, it's ready to hand over to the customer, let them put some miles on it, and we'll look out for warning lights going forward. 
OK, starting with post-fix analysis of injector current, and I'd focus quite heavily on this hump in the current where it um, switches off. We should see a nice flat line. Turns out to be a complete red herring. Just have a look at injector number two. Um, colours have changed, I do apologise. So grey is number two, purple is number one, and blue is number three injector. But there it is, look, it's still there um, to a degree. I think it's there in number one as well. What's interesting, if I just scale up a little bit, you see that it does coincide there with number one, but not in number three. Okay, do have a little bit of a dip there. Uh, so all in all, something and nothing, but uh, it's all food for thought and it's all good knowledge because uh, I'd focused on that incorrectly. So let's reset that and now let's bring back in current, sorry, not current, fuel pressure. So we go to our uh, views and bring back channel B and look at that. Um, remember how we were getting this drop in fuel pressure between each injection event. Let me just pull that down so you can see. So here's injector, let's start here. This is injector one, injector two, injector three, and it doesn't drop at all. And in fact, let's scale right up, bring this ruler down. There is no drop in fuel pressure between injection events. Remember, number two injector was stuck wide open. or was certainly stuck open anyway. Uh, let's tidy the signal up. So we'll use some filtering and we'll just remove some of that noise. Still got that induced event in there, but um, I think that's the cell, isn't it? Just look at that. Um, we need to focus on fuel pressure. If we suspect that we have an injection problem mechanical, then fuel pressure is where it's at. Um, not focusing so much on voltage and current. Although we do need to analyze that. We need to el eliminate the electrical side of the circuit. Um, other views we can bring in now. Let's have a look at the voltages. So we've got um, in voltages for Injector number one, so that's C and D. And the voltages for injector two, which is G and H. Let's take away fuel pressure, take away injector three. And let's just have a look. Let's zoom in as we did before. I think we can take that away now. Yeah, I'd focus previously on this dip here, hadn't I? Um, there, that seems to align quite nice with these peaks during the holding phase. But again, look at that, still got that delay there just before that induced voltage, even though the differential is zero between them. Move along to the other injector. Let's go with the green. There we are, this is injector one. Yeah. That one is raised, yeah, as before. No delay on that one though. Let's choose another one at random. Yeah, no delay there either. All right, I hope that helps. So lesson learned. The final word on fuel pressure then looks at residual. And if we look at fuel pressure just before we start the engine, we'd actually got in there 1.174 volt um, fuel rail pressure sensor voltage. So let me just increase the scale in a little bit so we can see a bit more. Um, and at this point now we start the engine. We denote that by the injection events. Uh, notice how the fuel pressure comes up and then starts to fall as the engine stabilizes. Um, this is interesting here at 2.7 volt, if you remember, um, we had run about 2.3 volts throughout when we had a leaky injector. So our fuel pressure was constantly high or trying to compensate for um, the leak between injection events. Um, we plateau here and our idle fuel pressure is approximately 1.129. So the important bit here is that when we switch the engine off, we do not see any falling fuel pressure. In fact, quite the opposite if you look closely. So engine off here, no further injection events, and this does not decay down to, um, I think it was 0 0.6, 600 millivolt, something like that, 550 millivolt. It remains at um, 
Not sure for how long, um, hopefully, indefinitely. Post-fix analysis of the injectors using NVH. So this is the stethoscope attachment. Let's just have a listen to each injector. So remember, we've got the accelerometer set. So the two taps there, that's just me setting up the test. Two taps again, inject number two. So it's far more crisp than before. Okay, and now the analysis of the amplitude. So if we just highlight this area here, um, well, I don't need to order scale actually, that's kind of got that quite nice. That's injector one, injector two far better than before far more pronounced the amplitude actually you'd probably argue that that is better than number one remember all these injectors are new and then injector three all right so the mvh stethoscope attachment um certainly helped there it was um definite definitely different between one and two also look how the idle stable as well so the unstable idle that we saw before that could well have had an influence on just how well these other injectors were performing they may have been trying to compensate for the overfuel condition um, either way it's an interesting analysis and uh, again proves how difficult it really is when you have a mechanical problem in an injector to electrically qualify the mechanical fault all right i hope that helps so there you have it. My assumption about the current was completely wrong. I was focusing on something that wasn't really relevant, but hopefully that stops others doing the same thing. Um, the killer test proved to be fuel pressure. We could see so much between each injection event and remember that decay when we turn the engine off. Uh, MVH, another test, probably the least intrusive of all the tests that was listening to each injector. And, and I hope this highlights just how difficult it is trying to diagnose mechanical failures with injectors, um, particularly GDI and diesel. Um, port injectors, slightly different because we often see the pintle hump in the current and again in the induced voltage. Nevertheless, if the electrical circuit is fine, then it's highly unlikely you will find anything wrong electrically with the injector. Um, Either way, I hope the case study helps because it's very not often that we get an opportunity to carry out so many tests on a component that we already know is faulty.